Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Trump just broke first $100 trillion barrier in history after Democrats said he couldn't do it. The naysayers on the left said it could not be done. Many progressives warned American voters that electing President Donald Trump would be disastrous for the economy and a surefire way to get a repeat of the disastrous crash of 2008 and 2009. Hillary Clinton even proclaimed to one and all that electing Trump to the presidency would surely cause yet another recession. An article from CNN Money from October 24, 2016, proclaims, almost everyone on Wall Street currently predicts Hillary Clinton will win the White House. A Trump triumph would likely cause investors to flee stocks to the safety of gold and bonds. Yet here we are two years into a Trump presidency in defiance of predictions otherwise, and the Fed has unveiled the latest snapshot of the U.S. household sector as of March 31, 2018, in the Fed's latest flow of funds report. What has been revealed in the report is that with $116.3 trillion in assets and a modest $15.6 trillion in liabilities, the net worth of U.S. households rose above $100 trillion for the first time ever, hitting a new all-time high of $100.8 trillion, increasing for 10 consecutive quarters and up $1.0 trillion as a result of an estimated $490 billion increase in real estate values as well as a $511 billion increase in various stock market-linked financial assets like corporate equities, mutual and pension funds, and deposits as the market soared to new all-time highs in the first quarter. From The Wall Street Journal, Americans' wealth surpassed the $100 trillion mark for the first time in early 2018, as rising home prices offset the hit to households' assets from a stock market swoon in the first quarter. Household Net Worth the value of all assets such as stocks and real estate minus liabilities like mortgage and credit card debt, rose by 1% from the previous quarter, or more than a $1 trillion, to a record $100.768 trillion, according to a report released by the Federal Reserve on Thursday. Total household assets in Q1 rose $1.1 trillion to $116.3 trillion, while at the same time, total liabilities, i.e., household borrowings, rose by only $44 billion from $15.5 trillion to $15.6 trillion, the bulk of which was $10.1 trillion in home mortgages. The breakdown of the total household balance sheet as of Q1 is shown below. Meanwhile, Hillary has once again been proven wrong in her doom and gloom assessment, spewing lies about anyone and everyone in an effort to get what she wants. In this case, it was to be President of the United States of America. She repeatedly cited the multiple times his businesses filed for bankruptcy as an example of President Trump's fiscal ineptitude. Meanwhile, she herself claimed to be DD broke in a woefully transparent attempt to relate to everyday Americans. She made the comment during an interview with ABC's Diane Sawyer. Sawyer pressed Hillary on her recent haul of $5 million in speaking fees. Hillary stated to Sawyer, You have no reason to remember, but we came out of the White House not only DD broke, but in debt. We had no money when we got there, and we struggled to piece together the resources for mortgages for houses, for Chelsea's education. It was not easy. Bill has worked really hard. And it's been amazing to me. He's worked very hard. Except, Hillary was ranked the 10th wealthiest member of the Senate in the years following, with a net worth between $10 million and $50 million. A few weeks before they left the White House. The Clintons were able to muster a cash down payment of $855,000 and secure a $1.995 million mortgage. This hardly fits the common meaning of DD broke. She also completely ignored the fact that many successful people, including past presidents, have gone through rough financial patches only to recover, earning back what they lost and more. Presidents Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses S. Grant, and William McKinley were also forced to file for bankruptcy during their lifetimes. What Hillary failed to capture or even mention is that President Trump has always managed to earn back what he lost, and even more. He has been remarkably business savvy, working hard for the American people since his election. He has chosen to take no paycheck while in office but instead has chosen to donate that paycheck to various entities in an effort to further help the American people. The rising property valuations are an especially encouraging sign. Given the hit the housing market took back in 2008 leaving many Americans with negative equity or in foreclosure. Overall, the value of households' real estate rose by $489.6 billion. This reflects how high home prices are rising across the nation. Given that the largest asset most Americans possess is their homes, this is huge. This economic turnaround could never have happened under a Hillary Clinton presidency or former President Obama. 
Hillary and Obama spent more time meeting with celebrities, touting their own supposed accomplishments that work to the detriment of Americans coast to coast and taking selfies. Working hard for the American people? What is that? Meanwhile, President Trump continues his hard work for the American people and it is paying off, bigly. Unemployment is at historic lows. Trade deals have never been better. Now America's overall personal wealth is seeing a significant upswing. Obama frequently spoke about how President Trump's economic plans would never work, would never come to fruition while he was in the midst of campaigning for Hillary in her failed 2016 presidential bid. He stated during a rally for Hillary, some of those jobs of the past are not going to come back. Trump just says, I'm going to negotiate a better deal. How exactly are you going to negotiate that? What magic wand do you have? Abracadabra, Obama. Abracadabra. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.